So one of the most annoying things about Outriders is the downscaling, especially when you join a friend's game, he's a lower level, and you wanna help him out with your overpowered character. Well, in this video, I'm gonna talk about how you can actually beat the downscaling system both in world tiers and challenge tiers when it comes to expedition. This applies to playing with friends and also in solo. And no, it doesn't require some sort of crazy equation. It's very simple to do, so we're gonna take a look at that. Plus, I'm gonna go over your feedback about some features about the game and what you guys wanna see and talk about that and your top comments, so let's do this. Hey everyone, what's happening? Open World Games here, hope you're doing good, and let's dive in right now. We're talking about beating the down scaling system in the game. So first of all, special thanks to Angry Turtle Gaming for this info now, it can be a lot to take in, but it's very easy to implement, trust me. Sources in the description below, by the way, so check them out. Now, how the game uh, determines if you should be downscaled or not is based on your armor and your equipped weapon. Now, if the enemy is two levels lower than your equipped weapon, now that's when you'll really start to feel the downscaling, especially for your actual abilities. Uh, so how do you get past this downscaling? So let's talk about more about your armor. This is where you can actually influence downscaling and bypass what the game is trying to do to your character because damage of your skills is based on your average armor level. This means we can influence the power of your skills and abilities through your armor. So you're going to want a character that's pretty OP in this regard, especially when it comes to your abilities. So the game adds up your entire armor level together between all equipped armor, of course. So uh, in the case of having five level 50 armors, for example, uh, you would first add the five armor pieces up to get 250 total. The game then divides that by five to get your overall level, which would be, you guessed it, 50. And accordingly, the game would then determine your fate when entering a lower level tier with enemies at a much lower level, of course. Now, the game would then downscale you based on this information and your current overall armor rating. But of course, you can tweak the info the game is receiving by changing how much armor you have equipped. This is really the important bit. Uh, so if you want to remain properly overpowered, of course, uh, with your abilities when joining a friend's game of a lower level or running world tiers, this is what you do. You simply go into your armor and your inventory that you currently have, and you simply remove a piece of gear. As you can see, I have removed my pants. But yeah, you go in here and you can remove uh, one or two pieces accordingly. So now let's say you only have three armors equipped now. Each one of them is at level 50. You would then add those up to 150, of course. Divide them now by three. And the ga game now reads your overall level of your armor at 30. So the game then says, oh, hey, I don't have to downscale this player at all versus level 30 or so enemies. So keep his power as is. And then what you can do is you can enter, uh, you know, your challenge tier, your expedition, what have you, and go at a lower level and feel overpowered like you should be without the worry of, of course, experiencing that downscale. And you could do this with friends. So if you really want to help a friend get through the story really quick and power up very quickly, you can do that too, and this is great for farming as well. So this is going to be a huge thing that will help a lot of players, I think, get past the annoyances of downscaling. It is so freaking annoying, uh, and it's one of the biggest things, in my opinion, that they need to address with the game. Again, it really does influence abilities and skills more than guns. Uh, so yeah, you're going to want a, a player, or a character, I should say, that's really OP in regards to a abilities first and foremost for this method to really work. I'm looking at you pyromancers. So this is going to be great for those pyromancers that can clear rooms. They can go in and just run through lower world tiers and lower challenge tiers if they want to with friends. So let me know if this works for you. Uh, it's excellent, uh, you know, information for sure. And I wanted to give it your way. Now it's time to go over what the community is talking about right here. So let's take a look. 
We have this from Divide Your Cheeks who says this, it has reached a point where my friends and I will chill in a party and play solo. This is how a lot of people are feeling right now. So something isn't right with your co-op when each player can individually get gold on expeditions, but always fall short when in a group. I'll be honest, it sucks. We all want to play with each other, but it isn't worth it for silver. I don't know the math, just that something is off. And even if this wasn't the case, we'd probably still play solo because the horrible lag delays. All of us are on wired connections an hour apart, yet still dealing with these kind of issues. I hope it gets gets fixed soon. Yeah, I think a lot of people are feeling it as more and more players are now entering the end game. They're especially feeling it. And I think uh, you could see here that the community is kind of waning. It's kind of, uh, you know, it's interesting to see the concurrent numbers slowly dying off. But that happens with every game after launch. I just hope it does not get too severe. My hope is they can fix these issues in time to really preserve the community uh, as a whole. All right, now let's keep going. We have more uh, right here. Uh, this comes from Frost King who says, just read the official breakdown on how downscaling works and it's still some BS you folks that people can fly need to can reconsider an alternative viewpoint. Uh, and he says this, let me preface this constructive rant criticism with this. I love this game. I've been at it day one. And despite a rocky launch, all things withstanding, I've enjoyed this game too damn much. That out of the way, I've just read the official breakdown on how and why you're downscaling players. And I'm just going to be blunt. It's an absolutely S9 concept. Nobody, and I mean nobody, is sitting in full level 50 legendary builds and saying, you know what? I'm going to run my game on world tier three for all that sweet loot 20 levels below my most garbage item. So this ideology that the most bonus we should have is the equiv equivocation of only a plus two average level above it to preserve gameplay is pure insanity to 99% of your player base. We don't want nor need to run lower tier content, but more often than not, we do so to help out the occasional stuck friend or random player. We don't get anything out of this act. The loot drops are essentially useless. We've maxed out our levels and even our fourth string gear sets are 20 levels above this. So why is this uh, the profiling sentiment at the studio to punish players for helping others? What is the point at all of interactions between players if the person who's mid max a perfect build finds themselves stat squished 15 to 20 levels into oblivion with the added perks of getting nothing useful for the run. And I think, you know, the biggest thing from this that I'm getting is the fact that, yeah, it's just sh such a shame that it, the assumption is that players would not want to go back and run lower level content, especially with others. Of course, that's going to be a thing, especially if you start running alts and experimenting with different classes. You're gonna to wanna to help your buddy get that class bumped up as quickly as possible. So this downscaling is not helping that whatsoever. Uh, now, furthermore, it says, there is virtually no scenario, no justification whatsoever that most of this game's community will ever be able to digest that will rationalize a god tier character getting killed or even remotely breaking a sweat in content tiers to have an average gear enemy level 15 levels below them. It's not a bad thing to, to let players uh, steamroll through the e easy mode for fun or to help players, especially when we're doing it for zero rewards or advantage. I sincerely hope you guys and gals that people can fly reconsider this system because I'm fairly certain it's going to become a massive headache for you the further along we go. Cheers. I agree. I totally agree. The more players that are entering uh, the end game, I'm telling you, I'm seeing a lot more complaints lately about it including myself, of course, uh, and it's a shame to uh, see. Now, let's talk about more feedback here as well con concerning, excuse me, enemies. Uh, we have Diabolist337 who says, enemy leap and projectile attack tracking is a major thing that holds this game back. Oh my God, dude, you are dead on. He says, bought this game on day one as I personally love looter shooters and it hasn't disappointed me yet. See, this is the same thing. It opens up the same way that people still love the game. So in my opinion, that's great to see, but it says, but I came across the devs post the other day and it got me thinking, it's pretty clear that the devs wanted a methodical approach to combat when, which feels more like a duel. The only thing that holds it back is the tracking on enemy projectile and leap attacks. 
They need to be clearly telegraphed and the enemy needs to follow that telegraph rather than just deciding to abandon it. Cough, blood merchant, cough. Yes, players should be able to dodge it. And that's precisely the point. The attacks deal good enough damage that any DPS focus a glass cannon like builds need to be wary of. Uh, one half of the reason why a player base has entirely shifted to killing the enemies ASAP is because of how bad it gets when even a single enemy flanks you. I'm not talking about humanoid enemies because that's what the cover system is for. I'm talking about the Beast of Enoch, Alpha Perforos, Crawler Beams, and Maulers Invisible Underground Area Blast. Oh my god, it's so annoying. It's fine if they stagger, but as a player, I know if I am skilled enough, I can completely avoid that incoming damage and shoot them back or close the, close the gap. I don't know what was the philosophy behind the design here, but Outriders really needs to take design ideas from Remnant in this matter. It's okay if the enemies are tough, but they repeatedly, repeatedly excuse me, feel unfair to the point that you are forced to reduce world tier so that incoming damage may become tolerable and the, this cheapens the whole experience. Outriders is a fantastic game. It got so much uh, good going for it. Enemy attacks tracking is one of the greatest issues plaguing this game. Otherwise, good combat. And that problem needs some fixing. I couldn't agree more, especially when it comes to snipers. I mean, come on, dude. That is so, so bad uh, when it comes to snipers. And, of course, this right here. It's trending right now on Reddit, and it's freaking hilarious. It comes from Crispy Nugs. It says, I can't be the only one. Is Surge not impossible to see 80% of the time? POV, you're trying to see where Brood Mother Surge went. That is me big time. I was going on and on about it on my stream uh, the other night. I was so freaking frustrated. So yeah, that's one thing uh, that especially needs to be improved for sure. All right, let's keep going, shall we? So it's time to go over your top comments. Leave a comment down below. It could end up in a future video. Let's do this. So the most recent video was called All New Updates from the Dev Team plus Square Enix Responds to New Fan Concerns. And this was actually explaining how downscaling works and a lot of you guys did not like, you know, how this system works in the game. So let's uh, take a look. Axe Closure says the following, if I had a dollar for every time this game crashed, it would have paid for itself by now. Man, so a lot of you guys are experiencing crashes. I have experienced crashes when interacting with certain NPCs. Let me know if that's the case for you guys. I think that's one of the most widespread crashes that I have experienced personally. and it's something they need to address. Uh, let's see here. Justin says, devs make time in-game. Devs get mad that people find ways to get through as fast as possible. Just be real. Say that you don't know how to handle it. Yikes. Uh, Jay Trey says this. I just experienced this today. I'm level 30, tier 14, level 41 gear with legendary weapons and two legendary gear pieces. And I can barely survive playing with my friend at tier 8, level 22. It's as hard to kill lesser, lesser mobs than it is to kill elites at my favorite level feels horrible. There's no excuse. Like, I don't even know. That needs to be bashed big time. Justin says, wait, we shouldn't feel like gods in a game that makes you one? Hmm. Shooky B says, I work hard in real life and come to play video games to relax. I miss the old way of playing. I hear you, man. I hear you. James Crook says, I mean, if this was supposed to be just a game that ends and not a live service game, then God, like builds, need to be a thing. That's what us gamers love to do, become invincible and break the game mold, especially in a looter shooter, for sure. Luna Kaz says, how many more videos were going to title Game Changer? <laughs> yeah, I updated the title of the video based on your guys' feedback. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Zerix the Dad says, what about the Tuca Tree stuff? Diego hints that the wildlife seems to gravitate to the trees like they are protecting it, and we have an expedition where the forest itself takes the drop pods. Bring on the tree monsters. The ints from uh, Lord of the Rings. The talk super slow, but attack fast. I don't know. Jesse says, I just want my character back. Oh man, that sucks to hear. Yeah, I will keep you guys in the know as to what happens with the inventory wipe issue that they uh, have promised to like restore inventory and things like that and then also that appreciation package is coming up and then I think after that my assumption is they would be doing a bunch of quality assurance type patches and stuff 
and then eventually, hopefully, we get news about whatever plans they have for DLC or new content, but I would imagine this game would be getting some. As long as you know too much of the player base does not leave but i think there's a good core player base that will keep this game installed on whatever platform they're playing and revisit it in the future but uh, thank you for watching stay tuned for more and i will see you all next time take care